Well, thanks for joining us, Mick. No worries. Pleasure. First of all, obviously, we're, we're going to be talking about the Australian Grand Prix and Phillip Island. You want to take us back to your favourite memories and moments that you've had? Well, I know the first race I did there was actually 88 on a superbike there. I think, um, I'm not sure whether it was part of the Swan Series or something, but it was, it was just when they'd, they'd um, set up Phillip Island again. <clears throat> it was horrendous with front tyres. <laughs> But uh, I think it was the Swan Series, actually, because um, I think the clutch blew on the line. But if, I did, if the clutch didn't blow on the line, I didn't have enough fuel to finish the race. They didn't really want me to, uh, to win because I just signed for Honda. So, yeah. <laughs> so okay. yeah, I weren't that happy about that. So, so it was all the clutch or fuel, which I was a bit disappointed with the way they played that game. But um, yeah. then, honestly, um, in the MotoGP era or the 500 era, whichever you want to call it these days, um, was 89 the one my, was my second Grand Prix, but was my first because I don't think I think I had a problem with the with the bike at my first Grand Prix in in, uh, in Japan. So look, I've had a lot of great memories there. It was you know we went to Sydney for a little while, but then we came mm. back. Uh, had a had a good crash in turn one while leading for a long <laughs> way. Um, you know, I remember just, that. Uh, yes, brain fade. You know, so um, nothing nothing other than brain fade. You know, there was no pressure on. I'd won the championship started thinking about other things and next minute it got away from me. <laughs> it was a little bit disappointing. But then the following year, 98, winning the, uh, you know, winning the title in Australia and also winning the Grand Prix. So, you know, that's a highlight of, of uh, one of the highlights of my career, but equally, you know, the highlight of Phillip Island. And, and how does the Australian GP compared to other races? You know, yourself, it's a, the, the, the pressure's always on a little bit more in Australia. You try and sort of, push that to one side, regardless, it's always there. Um, yeah. So you just got to focus that it is only one of, a, of, of a, a, a whole bunch of races. So you've got to treat it the same in a way. Um, as far as the racetrack goes, it's difficult to get away unless you can make a break. You mm-hmm. know, you're going to drag people with you. So, you know, that was always a key back then is to try and get away if you, if you didn't want a ding dong race right down to the end. But as a, as a racing circuit and as a spectacle for people, I think it's one of the best still in the world. Definitely agree with you there. What are the fans like at Phillip Island? Well, you know, the Australian public are always great. Everyone's there for the weekend and, you know, the whole town's buzzing. So, so really, it really does create a great atmosphere down in Phillip Island. And again, I think that's one of the things that attracts Dorna to the place. It's, you've got true motorcycling, racing enthusiasts. And then you've got the corporate level who fly in or drive in for the day come and, and have, a, have a great different, a different view of, and, and different aspect of viewing the race. And equally, everyone's enjoying and everyone's blending in and, and having a great time. You touched on it before, um, 1998, you won the, the race there at Phillip Island. Um, I think it was your first win at Phillip Island. Um, you wrapped up the world championship. It must have been a special moment. You, you wanna, can you take us back to that moment, to that day? Yeah, look, um, as I mentioned, 97, I had already won the title. I arrived there, and it was good. I I'd, um, I got I get along well with the circuit. I did at least back then. Probably not uh, this this far <laughs> out of my career, but but um, you know. So so I'd like the circuit. You know. So getting there in '98, I you know I had the pressure still of having to tie up the championship. Um, you know, I'd had a few uh, incidents throughout the year that made made it a bit of a challenge. '98. Um, so coming into the last round knowing that I could, if I do everything correctly, I could actually win the championship there. So that kept my mind in the game um, 100%. But I think I was on pole position and, and I was able to get away from the start, like I said. And, and, um, and then it was just about nursing at home because, again, um, the tyres there, especially on the 500s and, and, and equally now with the, with the MotoGP um, four strokes, it's pretty, pretty savage on the rears. Yes. And, you know, especially in testing where we used to blow holes in the tyres quite a bit. We didn't really have that issue with the temperatures and so on there, but still it's a concern yep. on a long race. So it was just basically get out there, make a lead and then, um, and, and then, and then bring it home. But, you know, si- Simon Crafer on the Dunlops was coming home pretty quick. And, yes. um, you know, but I knew I had enough up my sleeve and, you know, I think I had, I can't remember. I had quite a large lead, but, uh, I certainly nursed the, two, the last two laps as, as much as I can to make sure that I didn't screw up like I did a few years earlier or a year before. Yeah, doing it once is okay. Twice wouldn't have gone exactly. down very well. <laughs> year 2000, you, you stopped racing by then, but there was talk of 
of you and Valentino Rossi being partners or being teammates, how do you think that relationship would have unfolded if, uh, if you were together on the bikes? Look, I don't think it would have been an issue. He was going to ride alongside a team with myself. We had another sponsor at that point. And we were going to run another team independent of a full factory team, independent of Honda Repsol team. Yes. And, um, and then when it, it became evident I wasn't coming back to, to, to compete, um, the Honda didn't really want me to run a, 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 my own team as in the past with Kenny Roberts and Yamaha and and they're racing against us with equipment with equal equipment you know it wasn't a satellite team it was a factory team so so that's when i pulled out um the sponsor went away of course um number one i wasn't riding and then yes. you know, some jeremy burgess and the whole team dick smart etc all come across became um valentino's team and nastro azuro stepped in to to sponsor to sponsor um valentino so that's why there was a separate team just for Valentino instead okay. of the Repsol Honda team. And, you know, and then basically it was all merged together. And then I set up, I become general manager of Honda Racing yep. and um, of, of the racing for Honda Racing Corporation. And that's when we set up the just Honda, the, the Honda staffing rather than the HRC, a satellite team. And everyone was in their different uniforms. So the, you know, even today we've got this Honda people walking around. Yes. So just so they can serve us because, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're in that team or this team. We should have all, <laughs> all have the same backing, essentially. Exactly. And that, that's different. And you know that, you know, working privateers and all that's teams, right. the factory teams, they need the yeah. same equipment if we want the racing close to the front. I that's right. But yeah. So for Valentino and I, to answer your question, how would it have ended up? You know, he was he's quick and he was quick from the outset. But that, but that was why we wanted him for a teammate also, yeah. you know. And it would have been a tough challenge, I'm sure. He would have given me grief, and I'm sure I would have given him grief, you know. But it's one of those one of those things which just never happened. But um, it was certainly all the ingredients were there. It was actually all it wasn't all set in stone, but it was okay. set in stone enough. Whereas that's that was going to happen. One rider ended up in the team. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping on the subject of Valentino, he's indicated. Well, he's it's pretty much done, I believe. He's going to be racing again next year. What are your thoughts on that? Should he continue? And do you reckon he's going to be competitive on a satellite bike? Um, you know, again, what level of satellite, you know? Exactly. Um, you know, so as I said, the team he and I were going to run in, that was 100% full factory support, exactly the same as Repsol Honda. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure what level, you know, Yamaha, he's Yamaha's golden boy, isn't he? So, you know. I'm sure he's going, they're going to give him, you know, top line equipment, if not even some testing equipment, because who better to test the bike, especially at the, the space that he can run at, yes. you know, and, but, you know, he's not really, he, he himself realises that he's probably not in, in the championship hump for too much longer, even now, maybe. Yeah. So, but I mean, for them developing the bike is perfect. So, so for me, I think that could be a perfect platform for them to, uh, to, to develop a, 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 the next generation. But, um, you know, he's still racing. He's still competitive. And, and, and I admire his dedication, you know, and I think it's great for the sport. Um, you know, he's still quick enough. He's, he's, he's certainly got the, um, the experience he brings at home. If he qualifies eighth, you know, there's every chance he's going to be on the podium. You know, does he have the outright speed of Marquez right at the moment? You know, I, 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 it's, it's difficult to say. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, you know, he's forty-one, isn't he, or something like that? Something so, like that. Yeah, not twenty-six or twenty-seven anymore, is he? You know, that's you know, twenty years, you know, win MotoGP. You know, um, that's a long time at the top of the game. You know, the pressure just as a few years trying to stay at the front. You know, twenty years, week in, week out, slogging away. You know, surely yeah. he must be due for a holiday. <laughs> he must want one. He must yeah. really enjoy it. That's what I reckon. What do you think about MotoGP now, Mick? Are you a fan of the bikes, the electronics, what Dorna have done to make the series the way it is? Look, absolutely. You know, uh, Dorna have always had good vision. You know, Carmelo Espelada, I think, uh, you know, he keeps his cards close to his chest, but, you know, he lets enough go that if you sort of understand him, you can see the direction he's going. And for many, many years, he could see the where he needed a place, MotoGP, and I think he's positioned it very well. And, uh, you know, the electronics and this type of thing, I think the, 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 uh, 
um, well, all the electronics, all the ECUs are the same these days. Is that right? Yeah, probably? pretty much. You know, within reason. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and uh, you know, so that was again one of his his side of um, his workings. And um, um, yeah, the one tire rule was another thing he brought in. The one tire rule. I think that I think that really come down from when I think was it not Valentino was um, Casey dominated on the bridge stones i think <laughs> he did well, he, well he, he, he was beating valentino and, and danny on the bridge stones and they thought he's got an unfair advantage i think that's, that's right so i think that's <laughs> you know for me i would like to see the racing wars the tire wars come back because i think that was good you know and I agree. Uh, you know going back to earlier in our conversation about crafey you know the dunlop some races racetracks are unbelievable yes but, you know the michelin were we just were good we're, we're good everywhere but not amazing, you know, yeah. and the, the dust were bad everywhere, but amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, but it made them work. And, and but it, yeah. kept Bridge, it kept Michelin on their toes. And when Bridgestone came in and then, and then, so now they're doing this, but, you know, the problem we have now is you, everyone's got the same tire essentially. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. you, you have this tire, you have that tire, you have that tire, you, you choose. So, whereas, you know, back in, back in my day, they were hand carrying tires yes. after practice, you know, down, <laughs> You know, they'd, they'd phone up or whatever they do back to the factory and then they'd bring tyres down. Don't know whether you'd need to go that extreme, but, but look, you know, I am a big fan of the, 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 the bikes. I think they, uh, they look amazing. They, they sound amazing. The electronics, I think, you know, how many people could really ride them without the electronics, you know? That's, that's the question, isn't it? For sure. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so that, I think a few of the riders certainly need them. I'm not sure whether how many what, what the what the level of the electronics we're allowed to use or not allowed to use. So I can't really answer that question. But you know, somebody like a Marquez surely could ride the thing without le electronics. Yes. But you know, somebody further down the field, you know, might find it difficult, especially in qualifying. You know, and uh, it's when the tires <laughs> start to go off later in the later in the in the in the in the, in the race. So, but but look, you know, it's a great spectacle. Um, you know, again, you touched on before the racing, you know, there's the bikes are getting closer and closer from the front of the field to the back of the field, yep. you know, although they're not all the same, but I mean, there's not a great deal of difference to be honest. And, uh, yes. and, um, you know, the riding, the, the, the level of riders are, are, are as high as they've ever been. So you, you can only, you can only love it really. It is. It's a great spectacle. You put it, you put it perfectly. I agree. So thanks for your time, Mick. It's always great to chat. Um, good to talk to you about the old days as well. And um, yeah, hopefully catch up soon. No, for sure. Thanks, Chris.